I guess some people know me now as a Victoria who is a smooth champion. But there was a time in my life that I was not as experienced of a dancer and not as experienced of the teacher. And it got me to the point where I lived in my car. I was born in 1982, so I had 10 years of nice life, nice neighborhood and nice childhood. Then in 1992, Soviet Union fell apart. So you find yourself with your family in the rock bottom. Uh, parents divorced, so dad never was around. It's the only mom who have no job. You have nothing to do as well. Dance is the only light in your entire life. So of course you would like to do that. When I ride a motorcycle going home, I like the feeling of the wind blowing in the face, even though the helmet covers it, <laughs> I can still feel the breeze on my neck. And you can't think of anything else when you're on a motorcycle except for what's in front of you, so your mind is very clear. Um, coming from the practice, sometimes, you know, leaving the building and you're still thinking about the certain dance steps, but as soon as you get on a motorcycle, the only thing you think about is the road ahead. Yeah, I have to say I have a, a garden angel behind me the whole time that um, brought the right people in my life at the right time in my life. You didn't get depressed. Oh so gosh, can you be depressed when you live in a car? Of you don't course. have time. <laughs> you don't have time for that. You're constantly thinking. It's not like you're not doing anything. You're actually quite busy. First off, you have to constantly move your car. Um, then also, <laughs> I was in a studio all day. I knew that those were the consequences. I changed my job uh, rather sudden, going from the bank clerk to dance teacher without understanding the industry that I was coming into. I was three years younger than absolutely anybody else in my class. Plaza was wearing glasses. Perfect opportunity to bully somebody. So yes, I hated school. I like to learn. I was like the process of learning something, discovering something. But going to school and knowing that uh, your clothes are going to be ripped or something uh, from you going to be stolen, your uh, glasses are going to be broken. Then you're finally heading to the dance classes when everything's fine. I think these experiences like this are important because you realize you're not invincible. Life does happen to you and you can do everything right. You think you're doing everything right, but sometimes it just turns out going wrong. <laughs> That's what happens. I came into dancing when I was seven, but I think I retired by the time I was eight. <laughs> I got back into it uh, later on in the game, and I danced consistently till I was 16. And just in the, and just around that time when I started to like dancing, my parents had told me that I need to stop and I have to get serious with life and go to school. So I had eight year long break. It's like you transport yourself from one real world, which is not so great. It's harsh. It's kind of, yeah, you know what I'm saying? It doesn't matter where you're looking at, from what perspective, it's just so, rock so, bottom, so, so whatever. So for you is just going away from, from reality? From reality, right, because it's something you can hang on, and actually, you, it's gonna, it's gonna have you there 
for whatever I an hour, two hours or three hours of something quite different maybe not even realistic but those hours a day was keep me going and that gave me hope that might be someday somehow something going to change my sister had arranged a tryout based on my request she didn't realize i was joking <laughs> so i showed up for that tryout uh, and um, had danced a few laps of Vinnie's waltz and it just hit me that I have not been dancing for eight years and I didn't realize what a big piece from my life was missing. So I decided that I want to come back to dancing uh, and compete uh, on a professional level. Yeah, I realized I craving for performance. There I can be myself my worst self, my best self. But it's gonna be me. Nobody gonna do anything about it. They can judge me or not, or, but I care free. I'm not care less, but I care free. I didn't have a lot of following and I didn't have a lot of students. And in a very short period of time, have realized that I ran out of all of my savings and I have lost my apartment and I was forced <laughs> to live in a car for a period of time until I figured out where I can rent a room. It teaches you that you can go all the way down and still find the strength to come up. So if things in your life are not working, it's in your hands to change it into the positive. So you always uh, follow your goal. If dancing what makes you if that's something that you want to do and you want to pursue and right now you don't have the means to even have an apartment you put all of your focus into what you can change and how you can change it and you go for it <laughs> I think the most difficult part about the whole situation was is that I couldn't share it with my mom and dad. I wanted to do what I was doing already and dancing was kind of it. I just wanted to dance so bad. So I didn't tell anyone. I didn't tell anyone. I pretended every day when I came into the studio that I had a great night's sleep. <laughs> and uh, every so often I actually um, stayed in a motel so I can, you know, shower and get myself together. And nobody knew and suspected anything for the longest time, for like uh, maybe a month that uh, I, I went through with that journey. Nobody knew. I was hiding it very well. Always positive, always smiling in a studio, showed up for work on time, left with everyone else, except they went home and I went in the back of the building to my car. about life in black and white and you find yourself in sort of this black section of your life when things are not working out for you you find different kind of strengths and you find the answers to what you really want to do <laughs> <laughs>